One, the designers were so concerned with maintaining car lines that the fog lights don't sit down low. They are integrated into the headlight clusters, but they still work well when they're up there. Number two, look at the door windows. See the split window here? Okay, now look at the side window defogger vents. There are two of them. Because the window is split, a rubber seal runs halfway through the glass. That seal kicks air away from the window. That's a design flaw. So the engineers added a second vent after the window split, so the whole side window will defrost instantly. Genius! I mean, these are things that why this car costs so much money. Nothing was overlooked here. I have to say it again. This is what people are talking about when they say they don't design cars like they used to. The SVX is so good. Anyway, number three, the trunk latches. <laughs> the trunk latches. Even in modern cars, trunks are an afterthought. The lid. They just have like two bars that come down, and if you're packing stuff in the trunk, you gotta remember those bars are there, and oh, they start pushing down on your suitcases. Not on the SVX. It uses these little gas struts and a beautiful hinge that sits outside the trunk, so you can load this trunk all the way up and close it. The e-brake... Looks like a second shifter. And they managed to cram this flat six engine in there. I mean, so it's so a good luck change in the spark plugs. But the VIN number, look at this. The VIN number is huge. It's easy to read. And here's a dime for scale. The designers wanted to make sure you did not ever lose the gas cap. So the gas cap flips down on this weird sort of holder thing and it's spring loaded. And so what that does is that it flicks a little bit of gas on your paint and then ruins your paint. So you have to take the gas cap out carefully and then lay it down or else it's just gonna go <laughs> okay hmm. how's it drive it drives like a mitsubishi eclipse now hang on that's just due to its dimensions according to the owner north america never got manual versions of this car it was all automatic and that ruled out a lot of enthusiasts the people who ended up buying svx's were people who were on the fence between this and say a Porsche or this and maybe an E46 coupe, but it drives like none of those. It has a very flat torque curve. It's not as revvy as a modern WRX. The automatic transmission had problems too. It wasn't the strongest Subaru made. Visually, they aged well. Transmission, not so much. Be gentle with it. The car is very planted when you drive it. It likes hard cornering. It likes to cruise. But the real nice thing is grunt and pull, especially up hills. The engine is smooth. It will pull, and the automatic transmission really doesn't have to shift down that much. The visibility is amazing. There's a little switch down here under the dash for winter mode for your wipers. And what that did was force the wipers to rest at the exact position where your defroster vents are. Isn't that nice of them? There's a little button on the side of the automatic shifter. It's weird. I'll just let the owner explain. Now this has a button that says manual down here. Basically what you do is if you put that in low two, yeah. it'll start you off in low two in case it's icy out. Oh. That's all that does. Having one of these things is great, but the owner told me that this is going to be a long-term project to get this thing back to stock because not a lot of them exist here in North America and parts are even harder to find. And since it was such a unique build for Subaru, there's not that much cross-platform compatibility. It's such a shame, really. I hope this isn't one of those cars that's just going to fade into the background. I hope the SVX can rise to the level of, I mean, this is wishful thinking, but rise to the level of, say, a Grand National or something like that. A unique car, out of its time, out of its body, doesn't know what it's supposed to be, an oddball out. Maybe if it had flashier colors, people would remember it. It's sort of drab. The inside is a very conservative design, despite being so well made. If they marketed this car more as a sports car, which it is, rather than a luxury grand tourer, people would have remembered it more. Because 
Look at the paint. I feel weird blaming the paint. But you see one of these, unless you're really into cars, people may just write it off as, oh, some weird early 90s Japan car, I don't care. And they don't know what just rolled by. If Subaru would have released this car today, people would love it. Because people are primed to accept that Subaru is a radical company and wins races and is a rally superstar. But in the early 90s, Subaru was just, oh, they make those weird boxy cars that the mailmen use. So props to you guys who have the SVXs who are keeping them alive. Keep doing what you're doing. Automotive history needs you to save those cars, and you need to save them, because the SVX is a prime example of modernism. Here we go. Bend over, it's time for some book learning. Modernism is centered on certain self-awareness, a consciousness of one's place, function, and personhood. The more comfortable you are with what you are, the more open you are to experimentation with form and with expressions. Modernism is a traitor to tradition. A good modernist project betrays form as swiftly as friends into their third hour of diplomacy. Modernism is an art that privileges the old in the shape of the new, whether it's through revision, unconventional experimentation, or parody. Right? Modernism conveys an art that is inherently self-referential. It's the search for new ways of circumnavigating the barriers of progress, finding new ways to reach the same ends we've always sought, whether that's a feeling, an aesthetic, or a function. The Subaru SVX was an attempt at a more elegant, pragmatic Honda NSX, another bubble car that attempted to merge sophistication and performance. The SVX was competing not only with German cars, but also with the Dodge Stealth RT, only with about 100 horsepower less. Anyway, modernism is meant to challenge what came before, to present a new way of doing things, but it isn't always meant to succeed. The SVX tried to reinvent the notion of what could be a luxury performance car, but that doesn't mean it was destined for success. Now, 23 years removed, the SVX can finally get its due. It's like how it took until Orson Welles got fat and senile before anybody gave Citizen Kane its due. I won't go as far as to say the SVX is the Citizen Kane's of cars in regards to the impact it created, but rather in how it was misunderstood and unappreciated in its own time. These split windows and trunk latches, gas caps down, and the VIN number's huge. Optimism is overflowing, and I wish.